this in her pocket. Do you have the courage, the will? My teammates pulled it out. I don't want to say It will be a number two seed, Stanford, against a number one, Tennessee for the national championship here in Tampa. Time now for our national anthem. Here's public address announcer Agnes Green. And now to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad, please join country music recording artist Sarah Lenore in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rain what we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that Star Spangled Banner yet away or the land of the parade and the home of the prayer. Summit in Tennessee have won seven titles in 17 Final Fours. The first in 87, the last only a year ago. Pat Summit has dominated women's basketball as has no other. Tara Vanderveer has had her moments bringing national titles to the West Coast in both 90 and 92. And after an 11 year drought, she is back for a shot at number three. Time now to meet our starting lineups. Once again, public address announcer, Agnes Green. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the St. Pete Times Forum for tonight's championship game between the Tennessee Lady Balls and the Stanford Cardinal. Let's meet the starting lineups. At guard for Stanford, a 5'10 sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon, number 10, J.J. Holmes. At guard for Tennessee, a 5'2 senior from New York, New York, number double zero, Shannon Bobbitt. At guard for Stanford, a 5'10 sophomore from Queens, New York, number 21, Rosalind Gold on Rude. At guard for Tennessee, a 5'11 senior from Charleston, West Virginia, number 14, Alexis Hornbuckle. At center for Stanford, a 6'4 sophomore from Pleasant Hill, California, number two, Jane Appel. At center for Tennessee, a 6'4 senior from Staten Island, New York, number 55, Nikki Anasicki. At forward for Stanford, a 6'4 freshman from Fountain Hills, Arizona, number 14, Kayla Peterson. At forward for Tennessee, a 5'11 senior from Marrero, Louisiana, number 33, Alberta Augusti. At guard for Stanford, a 5'11 senior from San Diego, California. Number 11, Candace Wiggins. At forward for Tennessee, a 6'4 junior from Naperville, Illinois. Number three, Candace Parker. 
And introducing the head coaches for Stanford, Chara Vanderveer, and for Tennessee, Pat Summit. Working the sidelines for us tonight, Rebecca Lobo and Holly Rowe. Let's check in with them right now, starting with Holly. Thanks, Mike. Well, everyone's been so worried about Candace Parker's shoulder, we kind of forgot about Candace herself. Pat Summit admitted that her superstar was emotionally whipped in that first semifinal game, and it showed in her play just 6 of 27. Well, it was for good reason. The day before one of the biggest games of her life, look at her schedule. Morning till night with obligations, Player of the Year awards, autographs, she had to do rehab every moment she wasn't with the team. She was exhausted. But I just spoke with trainer Jenny Moshak. She said Candace is in a much better place. She slept well last night. Actually even had time for a nap today. Pat Summit said it best when she said Candace Parker is highly motivated tonight. Now let's check in with Rebecca Lobo. Thanks, Holly. Candace Wiggins has been spectacular all tournament, but she has not put her team on her shoulders and carried them. Instead, she has elevated their play. It's one thing to make your teammates better by knowing when to pass or by drawing double teams. Candace's teammates say when they are on the court with her, they believe they are better because she makes you feel her success. Mike, there's not a more energetic player and her excitement unites this team. She loves the game, doesn't she, Rebecca? The officials tonight, Dee Kantner, Eric Bruton, and Denise Brooks a very good officiating through getting the honor of a national championship game. Parker to jump center against Jane Appel. Tennessee in the home whites. Underway in Tampa, Tennessee basketball, Shannon Bobbitt. Stanford opens man to man. Parker, the little double team of Dusty will get the first shot of the game. Short. Nice box out by Peterson, kept Parker away from the boards. This is a well coached, fundamentally sound Stanford team. You will see five black jerseys look to find a body and check out, which with the rebounding prowess of Tennessee, you must do, Mike. Augusti was all over Wiggins. She gets three and knocks it down for three. If they set a screen and she has any kind of opening, it could be over. Her influence goes beyond the points. Her basketball skills are extraordinary, but I think Rebecca said it well. It's her influence on the mental aspect of her teammates that's as important. Anna Sicki over Appel. Got it. That'll be an important factor for Tennessee if they can get some points from someone else other than Parker. Well, after the SEC tournament, Pat Summit looked at Nikki Anasicki and said, I don't want you to hesitate from the free throw line or 15 feet. Shoot jump shots. Backdoor cut kicked out of bounds. Wiggins averaging 27.4 points a game in this tournament. Well, this is a simple dribble handoff, and it goes to the corner, back to Wiggins. Augusti, for whatever reason, and I'm not sure, just a breakdown, leaves Wiggins. Appel forced it up. And Anasicki right in her grill. Augusti on the way back to Hornbuckle, the hero of the semifinal with her only made basket. She gets her only made basket out of the way. First minute and a half into the game, instead of waiting till there was seven tenths of a tick on the clock forever. Nice give and go, and the easy layup for Goldon Woody. Nice pace to start the game by both teams. Both look confident and relaxed on the offensive end. Parker, nice catch. And the Sicky again, this time from 19. Rebound to Wiggins. She averages almost five rebounds a game, even though she's only 5 and 11. They say 5, 11 and a half. Stand for the team that likes to run the triangle offense. They need each other to get shots. Appel on the lob. She's double team. Appel the other night looked about a half step slow. I think the game plan for Connecticut was to run her up and down the floor and win, get her wind involved. I expect that Tennessee will do the same. Fouls on Hornbuckle, her first. 
Cone's not particularly adept at taking anybody, anybody off the dribble so you can get right up in her face and challenge her to go by you. Well, Jane Appel is one of the best passing post players in the country. The rare back-to-the-basket center that has terrific passing ability. Triple-digit assist. And they said this morning, get the basketball inside. Parker with a nice reach over, knocks the loose ball away and hustles down court to get position. Instead, the shot out of the corner, and it's Shannon Bobbitt at 5-2, knocking it down. Tennessee with a hot start. On Sunday night, I said this team was one-dimensional. What do you notice, Mike? A lot of different people being aggressive. Absolutely. Parker has not had to touch it every time down. Appel showing you her ability to go with the left hand. Parker forced that. She gets too many good shots to take bad ones. Tennessee, of course, in their man-to-man. -man. Look for some back doors for Stanford. There's one. Wiggins went all the way under, leans back in. She forced the shot because Anna Sicky was waiting for it. Numbers for Tennessee. Bob at same spot. She hit the last one. That is her favorite spot on the floor. Pat Summit encourages her constantly. Get to the corner, get your feet set, and use your ability to hit long-range threes. Only three other players have ever hit as many long-range shots as Bobbitt. Parker on the lob from Augusti. Well, she makes that look easy, but there are about five females in college basketball that can make that catch and finish. And she might do it better than any of them. Holmes nearly turned it over again. Remember, Stanford had only one turnover in the first half against Connecticut. They looked shaky after the first couple of minutes. They've got to be patient on the offensive end and solid with the ball. Except for Wiggins, Tennessee is quicker. And Shannon Bobbitt, five foot two, stick of dynamite for Tennessee. In the final four yet last year, important. Already out of the gates with back-to-back -back threes from her favorite spot on the floor. Look out, Shannon Bobbitt feels good. The Masters Par 3 Contest, tomorrow at 3 Eastern on ESPN. You know, it's not all fun and games when you're a mascot. Every year I find myself where the season always ends meets the bills never stop. You know that place where you realize even a squirrel can't live off peanuts? Well, maybe you don't, but believe me, I'm there. Here's a way to score on savings. Nice. Switch your car insurance to State Farm. You'll save big, plus get a payment plan that fits your budget. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You know I wear this everywhere. What if we took a moment to rethink our priorities? What if we rethink power and what it means to be strong? What if we rethink beauty and what it means to truly interact? At Saturn, we chose to rethink things, starting with every car we sell. With five totally new models, we chose to put the environment first, developing two fuel-efficient hybrids. We may just be a car company, but we're rethinking what a car company can be. Just something to rethink about. You gotta be a little bit twisted to do this job. You gotta live right on the edge. I wanna know immediately what's going on. Get your ass outside and earn your money. Oh, oh yeah! Stay the hell away from me, all right? I want the crowd down and I want it now! Deadly as Catch. New season premieres Tuesday, April 15th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel. Hey, Dad, I want a go phone. Let me sleep on it. It has unlimited talk and text. Let me sleep on it. And no surprise bill. I can't think it any longer. So I'm afraid you ask about the go phone every night and day. As long as there's no surprise bills to pay, we're gonna go get you a go phone today. Because I love you to the end of time. I swear, I love you to the end of time. Get unlimited talk to all wireless AT&T customers and add unlimited text. Go phone only from AT&T. This ESPN telecast available in dazzling high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Well, it's been a good one so far. Tennessee with the early lead over Stanford, 12-7, 15-50 to go first half. Stanford to inbound. Peterson gets her first shot. 
Tennessee have their 12 points to start this game. Five have come off two of Stanford's turnovers, and all five Tennessee starters have taken a shot. So much better balance on the offensive end. Holmes trying to get by, has a pull-up jumper, missed everything. Appel kicks it out to Poland, who was in for the first time. What? Poland That's... nearly has it taken away. Why did that shot cut you set? Comes in a sicky good hustle by Poland. I don't know. Well, that shot where Holmes didn't touch anything, that shot clock reset. Remember the issue we had with the clock on Sunday night? We'll keep an eye on that as we move forward. I think that one may have been operator error and not mechanical. Mm -hmm. But it clearly did not touch the rim. Harmon, number 33, was in for Stanford. Stanford right now cannot keep up with the quickness of Tennessee, and Tennessee with an unforced error there. Well, that's exactly right. For J.J. Holmes and Rosalind Golden Moody, that Summit's guards are much more athletic. They've got better speed, and this is what they want to do. After watching Connecticut have some success with pressure, they're going to show it off. Yep. Bob at pull-up jumper, rimmed it out. Stanford cannot continue to turn the ball over and expect Tennessee to miss those shots. Appel, and Asiki reaches over the top and took it away. It's a jump ball possession arrow. We'll give it back to Stanford. And Nikki Anasicki is one of the most versatile defenders in college basketball. Pat Summit believes she had a clean steal. It looks like initially she's playing behind, but as the ball comes in, she releases contact, makes a good strip, and Pat's got a good argument. Yes, she does. Wiggins may have to put it on her shoulders. She's not getting a lot of help. Holmes goes into a pell against Anasicki, tries to go underneath, got caught under the rim. She needed another dribble to make that move. Parker pull up, has to pass. And Anna Sicki will bring it back out and reset to Alexis Hornbuck. The fact that her teammates are making shots is going to make the best player in college basketball that much better. Let's see what Parker does. Now they have to guard everybody else as well as her. That's exactly right. So what happens? They give it to her at the elbow. They give her a little bit of space, and she goes one-on-one. -on -one. And folks, turn the lights out because there's not a player in the country who can just guard her. Last Stanford basket came three minutes ago. Stanford down by seven points. This is the most they have been down the entire NCAA tournament. Well, Kara Lawson calls Candace Wiggins, and I think accurately so, the best leader in college basketball. Now is the moment when your team looks to you, Mike. Appel with a nice step out on the double team. Parker goes with the left hand, didn't get the shot, draws the foul, and that appeared to hurt her. She's got terrific finish ability with that left hand. She does, when she takes it since the injury, pull up short. So don't bail her out with a foul in that instance. It's going to be a tough enough shot anyway. I'm even thinking, why does she go to her left hand? And since the injury, her shooting percentage has been way down. Look at the dramatic drop-off in free throw percentage. And the key, I think, for her, and we touched on this in the open, your left hand, your guide hand, is what's important. Can she get it up? Let's watch the shot. Look at that. They're almost even. That's good form. Well, that's soft on the rim, much better than it looked the other night. That's the same stroke every time. Excellent technique. 15-7. Harmon sets the screen for Wiggins. Got that one off. Never had her feet set. Checking with Holly Rowe. Holly, what do you have? Talking about Candace Parker's shooting numbers, how they're down. Well, when they started shoot around today, she missed at least her first 10 shots. She looked horrible. She was getting frustrated. Even a couple of, you know, little cuss words here and there, but it changed. That shoulder loosened up, and guys, in the last 20 minutes of shoot around, she hit 87 of 123 shots. That's 71%. Seems like the shoulder improves daily. Well, you just have to wonder how much of that, Holly, is her getting warm 
from getting some circulation there and loosening the muscles up. Yeah, exactly right. And now some pressure again. Much better handle. They used Jane Appel at six foot four in the middle of that pressure. But now you're trying to run the triangle, Mike, with 15 seconds on the clock. A lot tougher to do it. Seven to shoot now, and Wiggins will have to take somebody off the dribble. Runs into Anasicki on a double team. Fires over her just before the shot clock expired. Nearly made it, knocked out of bounds, out to Tennessee. Return to Augusta as ESPN celebrates one of the world's greatest events. Early round coverage of the Masters, Thursday and Friday on ESPN at 4 Eastern. And don't forget to watch the Masters Par 3 contest. That's tomorrow. Hornbuckle with a miss, knocked out of bounds. And out to the Cardinal. Let's remember this. This is a rematch from a game back on December 22nd, won in overtime by Stanford. This is a similar deficit that Stanford faced in that game. And Stanford right now working on a five-minute drought. Appel against Parker. Nice reverse that time. Did not get caught under the hoop. And she takes that shot an awful lot. he thought about it. Parker double team. Nice help defense. Harmon had a Pell, missed her. Now they've got a Pell. She turns around with a jumper, rattles in and out. Here comes Parker. She's smooth or what? She will be the first pick in the draft tomorrow. That is a lot. How would you like to have six foot five barreling down on you with that handle and that head of steam? That is difficult to contend with. What a drive by Bobbitt. Sweet crossover. This is a player who may be elevating her stock for that draft tomorrow. A little bit undersized, but 62 inches of pure dynamite and a terrific crossover. Eight points for her, and it's 17 to nine. Whistle and a pushing foul on Augusti off the ball. One on Alberta Augusti, one of two junior college transfers in the starting lineup for Tennessee. The Lady Vols off to a great start. and finish so exact and body tolerance is as tight as one millimeter it turns precision into an art in itself the all-new chevy malibu built to last built to love hi guys what's going on buzzword bingo buzzword bingo Shh. these innovation meetings are killing us the hype the jargon the buzzwords every time you hear one you mark your card in short, we are 100% committed to facilitating a culture of out-of-the-box, goal-oriented, value-added, disruptive Web 3.0. Bingo. <clears throat> At zero price, successful investing is about balancing risk and reward intelligently. For each three, five, and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat the Lipper average, finding the right opportunity. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. It's the five minute challenge. Trigger spray versus new roundup pump and go sprayer. Whose hand will hold up? One minute in, trigger spray starting to cramp. But look at Pump and Go with up to five minutes of continuous spray. There's no hand fatigue, no stopping. Weeds don't stand a chance. Wait! Trigger spray's on the ropes. Oh, he throws in the towel. New Roundup Pump and Go. Hard on weeds, easy on you. Scott 
Jason in the studio with your Sports Center right now. Bill Self, fresh off his first national title, is now a man in demand. His alma mater, Oklahoma State, is wooing the Kansas coach. Self saying he just wants some security. And on the diamond this afternoon, Red Sox home opener against the Tigers. Bill Buckner back at the fence to throw out the first pitch. Manny Ramirez with a triple plus error. He went up circling the bases. Sox win 5 4. Tigers now 0 and 7. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News now in high def. All right, Scott, thanks very much. And a remarkable ovation for Bill Buckner at Fenway today. That was great to see. Peterson. Nice dribble, nice drive. Picks up the foul. Now this is the player they call Sweet Pea. Uh, Candace Wiggins calls her the big dichotomy because this is an unaffected freshman. Only a Stanford player would call their teammate the big that's, dichotomy. That's absolutely true. Inside on phase, but a fierce competitor intense on the inside. McDonald's All-American a year ago. She's had double figures in four of the five NCAA games, including 17 points and seven boards against Utah. She was a big factor and did it very quietly. In and out on the second one. Now look Parker at the got a hand on it, but it was she who knocked it out of bounds. Great hustle by Jillian Harmon. Now Harmon, one of those glue players who suffered through some injuries early in the year, but has had some time starting, and I thought did a terrific job in the semifinals. Wiggins inbound and threw it away. Uh, when you put Wiggins as the trigger man, it's tough to find somebody else with the quickness to get open. That's exactly right. And you've got J.J. Holmes, who doesn't have the foot speed of Shannon Bobbitt. Seven turnovers so far for Stanford, a pace they can ill afford. Parker. Peterson's done a pretty good job on it, all things considered. Parker wants it low. Bad pass by Hornbuckle and picked off by the All-American Candace Wiggins. Fifth this. turnover from Tennessee. Yeah, and as I said, Stanford magnificent in the semifinal against Connecticut. Now remember, Connecticut did not come with pressure in that game until late. Appel. Kicks it out for the three. Holmes, who was huge against Maryland to allow them to get to the final four. The key about making stops for Stanford on this end is it doesn't allow Tennessee to get into their pressure, so they don't even have to worry about it. And there, yeah, therefore, they can keep their turnovers down. Hell on Anasicki. Parker wants it low. Offensive rebound and the follow. Well, that was pretty. Roberto Augusti, terrific length, great speed. Augusti was in double figures only once in the tournament. That was against LSU. Hornbuckle got the ball and called a timeout. Appel went to the floor, thought she had a tie up, but they gave her the timeout first. Stanford showing a little more spark. Now their leader, Candace Wiggins, is struggling. And you wonder about the impact that that is having on the group with regards to their turnover. This is a four-time All-American. They obviously are giving her a great deal of attention. Two of their best defenders, Augusti and Anasicki, have both gotten looks on her. You can see it's a team defensive scheme because every time she comes off a screen or a dribble handoff, they are passing her along. 19 to 13 the score Wiggins in the tournament averaging 27 4 she's been limited to just three points tonight only five players by the way have ever averaged better than 25 points a game and led their team to a national championship she wants to join that select group I think the support players around Candace Wiggins or around Candace Parker have got to stay aggressive will test her range. Anna Sicki. Remember what I said, Mike, at the start of this telecast. This is a team that must check out. You must find bodies and do a good job on the backboards. Tomorrow, Vanderveer said that yesterday at practice. Guys, they were in the LSU game simply because of their rebounding. 
Harmon turned around and found a way to get between two defenders. Bob it back the other way. Here comes the All-American after another pick. One on three. She'll take it in anyway. Missed the shot. Nanasicki with a rebound. Terrific job by Bobbitt to challenge without fouling. Bobbitt back the other way. Augusti was wide open, wanted the ball. Bobbitt didn't see it. Good screen at the top. Bobbitt. Kicks it back to Parker. Had a 19-footer passed on it. Augusti slashes in. Got her own rebound. Hornbuckle. Parker. And Parker is fouled. Too many second-chance opportunities. Tennessee pursuing the basketball from multiple positions. And so you get Poland in the bench to give you a little bit more size and fresh legs. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, in that last timeout, Pat Summit said to her team, we have zero offensive rebounds. That's five missed opportunities that we could score. Remember what rebounds do? They win championships. We want the ball every single time. Since that huddle, guys, they've come out four straight offensive boards. Boy, have they ever, and it's made a difference. Stanford made a run. Tennessee has pushed the lead back to six. He had Poland go right to the floor on that move and then fires up a full shot from the baseline. Numbers, Appel, that's great hustle by Tennessee to get back. Vicky Ball came off the bench and sprinted the length of the floor to get there and knock it away. 7.46 to go first half. Lady Vols by six. We knew that people who don't drive a Ford would be surprised by Ford. So we went from town to town and friend to friend, inviting real people to drive one. It gets great gas mileage, and it's fun. It's definitely a sleek and sexy car. The thing that surprised me the most about the Ford Focus is how much I really enjoyed it. Definitely felt comfortable and safe, and that really surprised me. Driving it for a week, like, I don't want to give it up. Now drive a Ford Focus for just $179 a month. Visit a Ford dealer or go to FordVehicles.com and drive one today. All right, have a safe trip, bud. Thanks, man. Wow, this is a surprise. I can't believe you're picking me up from the airport. Who are you? It's me, Stanley. I listen to you all the time. Uh, Stanley, can I help you? Uh, you can throw that in the back. Come on, we're holding up traffic. Oh, man, airport pickup? We're really taking this friendship to the next level. Yeah, it's about 10 minutes up this way, and then a right, and then another two and a half hours. Boyd Smith and Ford and Sterling Truck Sales announces the new Bullet and 360 from Sterling. The new Bullet comes in two or four door. Nothing stops the Bullet. The 360 with its low cab over engine design gets in and out of those tight spots. J.D. Power and Associates says Sterling ranks highest in customer satisfaction with heavy duty truck dealer service. Mid 10 Ford Sterling, Foster Avenue off Murfreesboro Road, 259-2050. Mid 10 Ford Sterling. Are you receiving all the savings available to you with Charter? You've got to call Charter today and see if you can save even more money on your favorite Charter services, like digital cable, new, faster, high-speed internet, and unlimited local and long-distance calling. Bundling your Charter services can mean big savings of up to $30 a month. And our improved customer service and convenient neighborhood locations mean we're always right around the corner or just a call away. So if the best features, service, and savings is what you want, you've got to call Charter today. Tennessee with a first half lead, 21-15, Doris. Well, Stanford runs a triangle offense, and one of the things you can get out of it is post-isolation. Now, if you've got a quality passing center, even if there's convergence on the catch, which Tennessee is going to react to the ball as most defensive teams do, you can get the kick in an uncontested three-point shot. That is the triangle to perfection. When they don't turn it over and they run their offense, they've been okay. Nice job in the truck. That was beautifully illustrated. Parker, five points so far. Wiggins, only three. We said other people had to step up. Boy, have they. Yeah, and I think, again, I don't, if you're Tennessee, you want everyone to keep that aggressive mindset. You do not want to become one-dimensional and strictly go to Candace Parker. Wiggins went baseline through the foul. Here's Rebecca. 
Well, Mike, understandably, Tara Vanderveer pretty fired up in that huddle. She said, I have no idea what team is in your uniforms. And she said to Jane Appel, do one thing. Just box out Anna Sicky. Spread out and run offense. Shorten the passes. Set some screens. She doesn't want to see those kind of turnovers. Then Candace Wiggins was checking into the game. J.J. Hone said, am I out? And she said, no, you're coming out next because I have no idea what you're doing. But guys, <laughs> Remember, this morning in shoot-around, the team was lackadaisical at first until she let into them. They then responded. Hard to imagine, isn't it? You have to be lit up by your coach to get psyched for a national championship game, but those are the things that happen. You're thinking about different things and maybe not playing. And a sickie down the lane had contact and just tossed it up there. The ball is there for another offensive rebound. On Thursday, the NCAA hockey semifinals come on at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. Boston College, North Dakota in semi number one, followed by Notre Dame and Michigan in the second game. Complete results from the Frozen Four at NCAA.com, the hall for the home for all 88 NCAA championships. Let's not forget, Mike, there is no better educator than experience. And we are looking at a Tennessee team that has tons of Final Four experience. They've got the national championship from a year ago that they are defending and competing hard. You've got a Stanford team that hasn't been here since 1997. The coach obviously has two national championships, but these players are struggling under the weight of the game. Here's that full court pressure from Tennessee. Bjorkland is into the ball game. And that was kicked, so they'll get to keep it. Clock does not reset. It's a 26. While you're trying to get through this first 20 minutes, you need to stay attached if you're Stanford, meaning you need to be close enough at the half that you can get your legs underneath you, Mike, and then come out stronger in the second half. Gold on Woody gets it up and gives it to Holmes. They're going with a three-guard offense right now. Harmon double team from behind. That's a jump and a sickie. Tremendous defense came from behind and just reached over. I have the feeling this is a Tennessee staff that was completely confident in their defense's ability to rattle Stanford to get up in their grill and make plays. Well, this is one of those. Denial. Anasiki, who is terrific. Anasiki has guarded five different positions over the course of her career. That was a great grab there. 23-15. Augusti. Got by Peterson. Nice pass to Anasiki. Augusti, very unselfish, could have taken the shot herself, but Anasiki was standing there point blank range. Largest lead. Wiggins against the double team. Watch out. Five seconds. Yes. Tennessee doing a sensational job on defense. Ninth Stanford turnover. They've got eight points off of him. And Augusti almost high-fived one of the referees <laughs> who came over and was holding her hand out to indicate where she should be. And Augusti was ready to slap hands. 25-15. This is a danger zone for Stanford. Down 10 at the 625 mark. Bobbitt. Bjorklund has been in a shooting slump. Can't hit that one. And Appel with a rebound. At least once one and done for Tennessee. Stanford just being overwhelmed by this defense. Appel had it knocked away. Gold on Woody got it back. Offensive foul? No. Block. No, it is an offensive foul. Yeah, I, I thought, thought so. that's what the call was. No, you were right or should have been. Well, this is, this is a Stanford team that doesn't have the players that can go by you off the dribble because the athleticism, the speed, the length of Tennessee is having an impact. And Candace Parker becoming a cheerleader. Getting a nice break. And the sicky Wiggins reached in, then got a double team. And that's a travel. The defense by Stanford creating some problems. Well, the last two possessions, Stanford has come out of their man-to-man. -man. They've gone into a 2-3 zone. They've been pretty aggressive with it. It's our Vanderveer, so Tennessee will quick shoot the basketball. They will not have a lot of movement against that zone. So we'll see if for the final 41, Stanford is able to make some things happen with that zone. Stanford almost to its season's average here in the first half. Is it easier for Stanford to double team out of that zone? No, and it's not easier for them to rebound out of it either. That's what they have to be careful of. Appel 
Nice drive under pressure. Augusta got there, but Appel used the glass. He has a half dozen. Parker back in after a breather. Ten to shoot. Now seven on the shot clock. Out of bounds to Tennessee. Well, Kayla Peterson is unaffected and a very smart basketball player. Watch her just shield so that her player, her teammate, Jenna Pell, can get a nice, easy angle to the rim. Kind of stuff that never shows up in the stat sheet. Stat sheet, but coaches love it. Teammates love it. Parker wheels into the lane. She's fouled on the way in. so difficult to contend with Candace Parker. It is rare the player who at six foot five has her skill set. For Pat Summit, she has coached Cheryl Miller, Shamiqua Holdsclaw, Tamika catching some of the greatest in the game, but this woman at the free throw line, she says is simply the best. Well, you think sometimes she is really deliberate with her moves, and you think, gee, isn't there somebody else out there six five who's got some quickness? Well, of course not. <laughs> It's, she's going to be very tough to defend at any level. Well, she's already dominated on the stage in the World Championships where you have 10-year WNBA veterans, and, and every player, every coach will tell you that Candace Parker was the best player on the floor for long stretches. I think one of the reasons she looks slow at times is because she is just so smooth. Mm. Plays at her own pace. Yes, she does. Boy, Wiggins has got to really take over just like that. They're staying attached, and by that, this is not a, a deficit that isn't manageable coming out of the locker room. I just think it's so important for them to get in there and settle down a bit. Bobbitt getting instructions from Pat Summit. Parker cuts to the basket, lost it on the way in. Trying to find a seam in that zone. Holmes, nice dish. Peterson missed the shot. Golden opportunity goes awry there. Parker kicks it back out. Bobbitt three times in this game. From that spot, she drained it. 11 points for Shannon Bobbitt. What a five-point turnaround that was. Appel, double-teamed, missed the shot. Peterson, nice reverse that time. What a tough shot because Candace Parker uses either hand to shot block. Three twenty-five to go first half. The lead is nine for Tennessee. Stanford again sitting in that zone. Bobbitt with a runner. Offensive rebound. Ball, no. But out of bounds. Emotions running high in this one, and why not? It's for a national title. See if this Ford Fusion can make a believer out of me. We knew that people who don't drive a Ford would be surprised by Ford. So we went from town to town and friend to friend, inviting real people to drive one. And it's all voice command. It's all voice command. I'm calling you through the car. How cool is that? You think it, you say it, and it happens for you. I love it. It's got navigation. I see all these nice cars, and now I'm driving one of them. I'm the man. <laughs> My opinion of Ford's definitely going up. Now drive a Ford Fusion for just $189 a month. Visit a Ford dealer or go to FordVehicles.com and drive one today. She's kidding. You know what she's been doing in Miami. You sit here, staring at a cement wall, alone. 
and she has the gall to just show up three days later, toss her bag in the back, and pretend she doesn't smell like new car. She was with a Prius hybrid. Oh, so now suddenly she's an environmentalist. With dozens of the hottest cars to choose from, there's a reason Avis is your other car. You gotta be a little bit twisted to do this job. You gotta live right on the edge. I wanna know immediately what's going on. Get your ass outside and earn your money. Ooh, yeah. Stay the hell away from me, all right? I want the crap down and I want it now! Deadliest Catch. New season premieres Tuesday, April 15th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel. Tennessee maintaining its control here in the first half, 30-21. They're doing it with their defense at virtually every position. They have size, they have speed and athleticism, and that's their advantage, and they're taking advantage of it. The pressure has been extraordinary. Stanford does not have players who can dribble drive. They can't create their own and go by you. So with all that length, they're getting into the passing lanes, active high hands, terrible place to pick up your dribble if you're... Candace Wiggins, and look at the size of that trap. Great job not reaching. They have got to settle down. Anasuki, six points, five steals, and two rebounds already. Five steals, remarkable for a player of her size. <laughs> the Orkman gets at the top of the circle, tries the runner. You just can't buy a shot lately. Augusti with the save. Almost. Turns it over to Stanford. So an opportunity to creep a little closer. Now, if you're Tara Vandeveer, your team has played as poorly as they have played through the first five games. Mm -hmm. You're only down nine. Again, it's about staying close enough to give yourself a chance in the second half. They had the advantage there momentarily. Wiggins into the lane, turnaround jumper, way short. And out of bounds to Tennessee. Mike, and now the officials are, go are going to talk about it. Do you have the feeling Candace Wiggins is pressing a bit? Totally. Yes. Now they changed the call. Much of the disgust of the Tennessee bench and fans, but the referees working together. Appel. Wiggins set up for three as she got the tap off the loose ball from Jane Appel, and that cuts into the lead. And Asiki trying to drive on Appel, goes up and under. Wow. The major question about Inasiki at the next level is his her offense. She has been so limited throughout the course of her career, she's already put eight on the board. Good pass to Appel trying to get by Anasiki, and she'll draw the foul. Nikki Anasiki has embraced her role throughout her career as a defensive stopper, but I think Pat Summit sent the supporting cast a message. Tonight, I need you to be aggressive. Everyone else was so one-dimensional against LSU that they only put 50 points on the board. What a different mindset from everybody alongside of Candace Parker. It looked like they changed their offense totally in 24 hours. Mm. Well, when you, hits a free throw. When you have somebody of Candace Parker's ability, and she is level above most of the people in college basketball, it's easy as, as a teammate or as a fan or as an announcer to get caught up in all of that ability and stand around and watch. Sure. Patel misses the second free throw, and a sickie with a rebound. 32-25. Thornbuckles had a good first half. Augusti, pretty decent ball handler, put it up and draws the foul. Coming up with the halftime report, Trey Wingo, Carol Lawson, and Stacey Dales. The Red Sox get their rings, and we'll have the first half analysis of this one. Last foul was on Holmes. Her first. Augusti way short on the first free throw, 62% played at Central Florida Community College and highly unusual for Pat Summit to go the junior college route. But this is a player she wanted and needed. Well, you can see what she's been able to do. Huge in last year's championship game, 10 points. Had a terrific semifinal and came up with much needed points against LSU. 33-25, here's that trap coming again. Holmes dribbles past pressure. Bobbitt now on 
Wiggins as they've tried just about everybody on her to wear her down. Terrific denial of the basketball. To four shots, Stanford players trying to do too much. Owen really didn't have a good look at it. Bobbitt, great crossover. Bangs into Poland and draws the foul. Look like a pinball machine. I tell you this, how about the crossover? Just a change of pace. Grew up in New York, honed her game at Rucker Park, the famed city playground. Ankle breaker. Bob at the line on the one and one. This is a finalist for uh, Nancy Lieberman's award as the best point guard in the country. Shortest player in their history. Shortest in terms of inches, but certainly not in terms of her heart. Uh, we found that uh, short players can play. It's the ability, not the frame. You'd like them bigger, you'd always like them bigger, but you have to go with ability and heart. And another Stanford turnover. That's 13 in the first half. That is their game average. You don't need to help Tennessee. Bobbitt finally missed something. Wiggins gets to the baseline, leans into it. What a pretty move by Candace Wiggins. She has 10. You have to respect her ability to shoot the basketball. So when you close out, she will really use that ability to dribble drive by you. She waited four years to finally get here. And a sicky with a set shot. Boy, that hurts if you're Stanford. There's no, you know, Tara's message to her team this morning was, it's all about Candace Parker all the time. In the first 20 minutes, that has not been the case. Wiggins had her pocket pick. Six steals for Anna Sicki. And the last person you'd think she'd be able to get it away from, the All-American Candace Wiggins. Now this is a six foot four player getting out and getting into the grill of a one and two guard. How about that for some versatility on the defensive end? Just a tremendous first half for Vicki Anasicki at both ends of the court. Well, it's a new season, but an old rivalry. Alex Rodriguez and the Yankees wrap up their first series in Fenway on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell. They'll face David Ortiz and the Red Sox at 8 Eastern. Coverage begins with Baseball Tonight, driven by Chevy at 7 Eastern. Our congratulations go out to our colleague Dick Vitale. Named to the College Basketball Hall of Fame and the Naismith Hall of Fame. Dick's been my partner for a long, long time. And our colleague at CBS, Billy Packer, as well. Done many games in the past with Billy. He richly deserved the honor, as Dick did. It's nice to see those guys go in the Hall of Fame together. Absolutely. Both uh, professionals and Dick Vitale, a Hall of Fame person, more importantly, than a Hall of Fame basketball announcer. Look How's at the that numbers. for a first half wow. line? Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Out of Staten Island, New York. Maybe the most impressive thing about Nikki Anasicki, she has a triple major. We barely got through one, and it was easy. <laughs> the championship record is eight. She'll have 20 minutes. Wiggins, shot clock winding down. Somebody's got on low. Harmon doesn't hit it. That's a huge shot. It was just inside the three-point line, but so what? Well, they, do they credit her with the basket? I thought I saw Dee Kantner wave it off. She waved her arms, but I can't imagine that that came too late. It is off in plenty of time. Let's go to Rebecca Lobo. Thanks, Mike. Tara, how do you get your team to settle down and handle this pressure better? God, Rebecca, I have no idea. I mean, we are so discombobulated. Their pressure is causing turnovers that I haven't seen all year. Um, you know, we're, we're just not playing with any offensive flow at all. 
uh, when Candace is getting the ball stolen by their center, you know we've got trouble. So I better get in there and talk to them. All right, Coach, All thank right, you. Perfect. Standing by with Pat Summit, we'll send it to Holly Rowe. Coach, how do you assess your team's performance there in the first half? Well, I think we had Nick Anasicki very inspired, and that, that really set the tone on both ends of the floor. I thought Shannon, Shannon came to play. Um, obviously, uh, Alberta, you know, Candace is Candace, but when everyone around Candace, the supporting cast really steps up their game, now we're, now we're a different team and a more difficult team to defend. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Holly. That last basket, by the way, does count, so it's 37-29. The supporting cast stepping up. Let's go to Trey Wingo, Carol Lawson, and Stacey Dales for our halftime report. All right, Mike, thanks very much. Wow, what a surprise, not only for the Tennessee offensive output, but, Stacy, the lack of an offensive output mm -hmm. from Stanford. They've averaged 90 points mm -hmm. over their last two games. They only have 29. What's going wrong? Well, Pat Summit and Tennessee coming into this game, and our Doris Burke alluded to this, they wanted to disrupt and delay Stanford's offense. So Pat told us, we're going to pressure a whole lot more than we saw Connecticut do. They've done that. Here's the one, two, two, one. And I want you guys to keep your eye on the shot clock right now. We're going to highlight it at the bottom of the screen. Stanford is just now assembling into its triangle offense. They make their initial entry pass. But as Kara talked about in our open today, denying all other next passes and forcing Candace Wiggins to challenge. They switch, do a great job switching on the screens. And Nikki Anasicki, major mismatch against Candace Wiggins, forcing the bad shot. So Candace, Candace Wiggins and company are going to really have to adjust to this in the second half. Well, they're going to need to. And you heard Tara Vandiver say, I have no idea we look so discombobulated on how we're going to do that. Carol, we talked so much. Somebody besides Candace Barker has got to step up. And the player they call Little Bit has come through in a big way in the first half. Yeah, Little Bit gave a much-needed jolt to the Tennessee offense in the first half. And she was really the player that needed to because of her long-range shooting ability. Obviously, Candace Parker creates a lot of attention on the interior. If Shannon Bobbitt can continue hitting outside shots, that's going to create a host of problems for the Stanford defense. She's on the attack. She's hunting for her three-point shots. When Shannon Bobbitt does this, Tennessee offense flows a whole lot better. Well, not only that, but you have Nikki Anisicki already in double digits. Candace Parker right now the third leading scorer for Tennessee. The Lady Vols are good with that. Uh, they have forced 14 turnovers already, more than Stanford has had in either of their last two games. Lady Vols halfway to an eighth championship. Stanford needs a comeback in the second half. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented on ESPN by Orbitz, is brought to you by LoJack, the most successful theft recovery system on Earth. And the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. It was terrifying. Yeah, the bike had just vanished, and we were stuck out here. One hour later, Tim and Jesse's bike was recovered thanks to LoJack, the only vehicle recovery system used by police, LoJack the most successful theft recovery system on Earth. It's time to start your engines. It's time to reclaim the yard. It's time to mow now and pay later. Because now through April 23rd, you'll get no payments, no interest until January 2009 on any tractor purchase of $859 or more with your Home Depot consumer credit card. Only at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Hi, Enterprise. I'm at the repair shop, and I need to rent a car. At Enterprise, we'll arrange to pick you up free and get you on your way. Nice save, Mom. We can go to Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Mama. Calling Mama. We knew that people who don't drive a Ford would be surprised by Ford. So we went from town to town and friend to friend, inviting real people to drive one. It gets great gas mileage, and it's fun. It's definitely a sleek and sexy car. The thing that surprised me the most about the Ford Focus is how much I really enjoyed it. Definitely felt comfortable and safe, and that really surprised me. Driving it for a week, like, I don't want to give it up. Now drive a Ford Focus for just $179 a month. Visit a Ford dealer or go to FordVehicles.com and drive one today. Each day, a 170 billion megawatt power source rises to meet our ever-growing energy needs. 
Isn't it time we turn on the light? Solar energy from GE. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us and most will of us go will pro. pro in something, something other than, other than sports. sports. In something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented on ESPN by Orbitz, is brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. Well, being a coach, you wear a lot of different hats. You want to be someone that is approachable. She's been to the summit three times now. Someone that understands how to lead and inspire. You've had good chemistry. When you do it as a family, it's, it means more. We're going to Final Four. Yeah. Everybody are they ready? I do feel like I've, I've just had so many people that have influenced my life, and I think the willingness to share is so important, and that's what I try to do. For the seventh time in Pat Summit's exceptional career, Tennessee wins a national championship. People say, you've been doing this 34 years. I mean, why? Why do you stay in it? I love it. I'm still driven. I hate to lose. I'm passionate about teaching. I love practice. I probably enjoy practice more than any part of what I do. And that's because um, that's my classroom. And I'm, I'm with the people that we have recruited here. And obviously, I'm there to help them get an A in the class. Pat Summon and the Lady Vols up by eight at the break. The great news tonight from Tampa Bay are being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship, the Bloomin' Onion One. The Outback Airship is in town as part of Outback's 20th Bloomin' Birthday Celebration. Coming up in the second half in just a little bit, Tennessee up 37-29. Enterprise, I'm at the repair shop, and I need to rent a car. At Enterprise, we'll arrange to pick you up free and get you on your way. Nice day, Mom. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Ah, that's what we're talking about. Hi, I'm Chuck's phone. Chuck can't answer right now because Chuck's an idiot. He doesn't have AT&T, so he's got zero bars in here. But by all means, keep calling about those basketball tickets you just won. We'll just keep shooting tiny hoops with the townies. Living a dream. Teardrops! It's fun! Suck the weatherman! For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. Look at him. He's everywhere! He's a machine! Buy one exclusive slider for only $29.99 and get one free. What are you guys doing? We're ideating. ID what? Ideating. What's that? Coming up with new ideas. Why don't you just call it that? This is different. We need to rethink the way we do things. Structure. Process. We need to innovate. How? We haven't ideated that yet. Good luck. Thanks. Honey, look at this. Is it for all of us? Yeah. Magic begins when you realize you can afford a Disney vacation. Other affordable packages all year long. Visit DisneyWorld.com slash affordable. Live from Augusta, for the first time on television, watch the biggest names in golf let loose before they get their game faces on. The Masters Par 3 Contest, kicking off three days of Masters coverage, tomorrow at 3 Eastern on ESPN. Commitment creates champions. Dedication perseverance and teamwork are hallmarks of those who achieve the NCAA is proud to say thank you to our corporate champions and partners who recognize the important role of athletics and education by supporting them 
you help us create America's champions for tomorrow. In the Western Conference, it's down to the wire. The road to the finals will go through San Antonio and their leader, Tim Duncan. Phoenix, though, has something to say about that since they want the advantage for the playoffs. Tomorrow, it's the playoff push. Suns and Spurs, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. Scott Reese in our Sports Center studios. This is your Sports Center Right Now update. And we've got afternoon baseball for you at Fenway Park, the home opener, the Red Sox and the Tigers. Billy Buckner back to throw out the first pitch. And his former team did him right. Manny Ramirez off of Kenny Rogers. Most parts of the ballpark, that's a home run. To this part, it's a triple. But it's not just your garden variety triple because the Tigers are going to throw this thing into the stands. And Manny will get up, walk home, triple in an error. Sox go on to win 5 0. And yes, Detroit is 0 and 7. Other American League scores. You see the Yankees uh, lose to Kansas City 5 2. And the bad news continues. Jorge Posada removed in the sixth inning will have an MRI on what they are calling a dead arm. A is now leading the Jays 8 6 in the eighth. National League. Phils beat the Mets. Astros up on the cards. Rockies 3 1 over Atlanta. And 1 0 Braves over Johnny Cueto and the Reds. Masters on Thursday, some notable tee times. Defending champ Zach Johnson at 10.23 a.m. Tiger goes off at 10.45. Phil at 1.41. And Ernie and Jim Furyk at 1.52. For all your tee times, log on to masters.org. Now I'll get you back to Trey in Tampa. All right, Scott, thanks. It is all Tennessee as we get set for the second half. How does Stanford get back into this game, Stace? Well, you've got to find a way, Trey, in my mind, to adjust to the pressure. And if you guys saw in the first half and noticed that there were nine players in Stanford territory when they were trying to attack offensively, that's not going to work against Tennessee. You can't have four of your players in the backcourt when you try to break the pressure. You have to extend offensively to extend the defense to create space in order to work right now. Well, there's a couple things that allow Tennessee to see the pressure on the defensive end. The first is you have to get stops in your half-court defense if you're Stanford, and then they can't set up their pressure. And the second thing is to stop fouling. Tennessee goes to the free throw line 11 times in this first half. That's another way that Tennessee can set up their pressure and force them to turnovers. Tara Vandiver, 2-0 all-time in championship games. She's going to have to work in the second half to make that to 3-0. Thanks in a large part to the littlest player in the game. Shannon Bobbitt has 13. The ball's by 8 at the break. Second half coming up. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented on ESPN by Orbitz.com. Orbitz, keeping you a step ahead. And in part by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Enjoy Cokeness. Honey, are you going to keep that thing above your head the whole vacation? Yeah. I booked our package on Orbitz. I got this great hotel. I saved a ton. Oh, you're embarrassing me. When I get back from aerobics, I'd like it gone. You've just been dealt a hot hand. With the Orbitz Sizzlin' Hot Vegas sale, you'll save $50 off your Vegas vacation. Save now at Orbitz.com. Do you think that we, as the Coke brand, would have a case against the Coke Zero brand? for taste infringement. What's your specialty? I am in real estate law. Perfect. Perfect. Right. Let's say this is a property, an okay. architectural, it's been uh, it's made a landmark. Next door, somebody buys the lot, they build an eerily similar house. What can we do there? Let's put on the lawyer pants and walk down that path. Da, 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 da. So, anyone good? Yeah, I got Ellis. Penny and K-Mac, three-time architect of the year. Who'd you get? There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes. Check it out. The Jay Campbell rookie car. No way. That guy dominates in the lab. Yeah. And just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. I didn't know he minded in French. Jersey Mike's asks, what's your favorite number? Number three. The eight. I'm definitely the seven. Lucky 13, the original Italian, Mike's way. Number 9, the Club Supreme. The 10. 17, 
with grilled onions and peppers. The sixth, certified Angus roast beef. Don't know your favorite number? Try them all. Everyone's got a favorite number. Jersey Mike's has yours. No one can compete with Parker Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, and Murray. Our deals just can't be beat. Feel the excitement of driving the new Ford Focus today. The sleek design gives the impression it's in fast forward even when it's standing still. Stay connected at home, work, or somewhere in between with Sync, Ford's exclusive voice activated communication and entertainment center. You talk and Sync listens. Come see the difference today at Parker Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, and Murray, where we won't be beat. to the NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz. We're at the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa, Florida. The lead is eight at the half. Welcome back, Mike Patrick, Doris Burke, our entire ESPN crew. Glad you could join us. You hit the nail right on the head at the start of the game. Somebody beside the superstars has had to step up and both teams did it. I like the mindset of the supporting cast of Candace Parker. They came out aggressive and assertive. Nikki Anasicki, Shannon Bobbitt. If you're Stanford, Mike, you played as poorly as you have played through the first five games of this tournament. 14 turnovers, only 29 points, and you're still in the game. What are your Home Depot coaching adjustments? Well, this is a Stanford team that had two significant scoring droughts, and they were primarily what allowed Tennessee to set up their pressure. You cannot dribble into a long and athletic and a quick trap, and that's a tough pass to try to make. You also cannot pick up your dribble and walk over half court and essentially make it a three-man trap. So you've got to hit middle, and then the spacing should spread out naturally. Here are the numbers from the first half. Wiggins with 10. She also has a couple of boards. Appel with seven. Anasicki and Parker, the leading scorers for Tennessee. Let us see. Has Stanford gotten their legs underneath them? They still, they're not any more athletic coming out. Let's see if they're smarter. Peterson, nice pass, but Appel couldn't hold on. He's knocked out of bounds. That would have set up an easy bucket. Peterson and Appel have done a good job in this tournament passing to each other. Boy, Appel was wide open on the inbounds play, and Holmes didn't see her. Peterson, tough shot off the glass. She's got a future. Five points tonight for Kayla Peterson. Hornbuckle with a miss. Rebound to Gold on Woody. Ahead to Peterson. Anna Sicki got back and fouled her. It'll be two on Anna Sicki. The true advantage is, if you're Stanford, is that triangle offense and your ability to get each other shots. And this was not smooth, but it was nonetheless unaffected play by a freshman who has extraordinary maturity. Peterson, 71% free throw shooter, makes the first. In the NCAA tournament, she is averaging a double-double, almost 13 points a game, 10.4 rebounds a game. She's done a terrific job. It's been a perfect compliment to Jane Appel because it's six foot four, similar size, but she's made herself a perimeter threat at the behest of her coaching staff. Cut the lead to four, coming out with a little burst to start the second half. And they open man to man. They, they went zone to protect Kayla Peterson with two personal fouls. Now they come out and go man to man again. Hornbuckle has to kick it back to Augusti, and she hit the shot in front of Wiggins. Five the, for Augusti. You see the value of having somebody who can beat you off the dribble. Holmes all the way in. Think she shied away from Anasicki and came up short. Bobbitt didn't find anything. Then they back away from her, and she's wide open for the shot, but missed it. Stanford trying to push, maybe get an easy basket or two. Appel wants it low, has it. In and out on the jump hook. Loose ball, Appel goes to the deck, and it's out of bounds to Tennessee. Good hustle by the sophomore and Hornbuckle, the Tennessee player who was down there after. 
there have been occasions where it looks to me like Appel is rushing. I think she knows she's got a better athlete on her than in Anna Sippy. So, you know, she needs to use her size, her strength to her advantage. Parker tries to dump down and throws it away. You know, thinking of Appel, she doesn't look nearly as gassed as she was in the semifinals. Got a little more energy. The part of that, you see kids come out early in the game and use up all that emotion. And that adrenaline makes you tired, but she turns this one over easily. Bobbitt on the run, and that's a travel. Bobbitt had a three-on-one and didn't run it very well and committed the 10th Tennessee turnover. On the other end, Anna Sicki didn't get credit for a steal, but it was her pressure that forced Appel into a terrible pass. Hold on Woody, who has been invisible offensively. Parker reaches in, commits the foul. Her second. Nobody in real foul trouble in this game. Appel is critical for the hopes of Stanford in the second half. She's got to play better, and here's why. So much of the triangle has run through her. Tara Vandeveer at the start of the year said she was a young sophomore. She's got to be an old sophomore. Offensive foul on Wiggins. Two on Candace Wiggins. And this is a pass from Appel who leads her right into the help defense. That's Appel who's got to have better vision. Typically, Appel looks opposite when she gets the ball in the middle of the floor. That's where the better opportunity was. Triple team, nice dish to Hornbuckle, missed the shot. And Asiki had the ball tipped right to it. 12 for Nikki Anasiki. Holmes trying to get the ball. Parker right there to take it away. Terrible pass by Peterson. And even a worse job by Holmes. She was hardly moving at all. And no movement from the Stanford bench to get a timeout. Remember, no 10-second violation of women's college basketball. You can take as long as you want to advance it over half court. But when you do that, Mike, now you're setting up your triangle again with about 18 seconds. 43-33. And Asiki's going to be called for a foul. She didn't like it. That's three on Vicky and Asiki. That's probably the reason that call bothered her. I think you've got to take her out. I think it's too early to get three and not make a switch. She's frustrated by it. Even if you just take her out for a couple of minutes, say, let's think about this. Vicky Ball will come in in her place. We haven't seen Alex Fuller at all tonight. Inbounds to Wiggins. Wiggins got away from her defender for the easy layup. Terrific cut. They are in deny all over the basketball floor, so you've got to make smart cuts. A dozen for Wiggins. Parker trying to face up on Peterson. He's really done a pretty good job tonight. Tennessee knows its advantages with its athleticism and its ability to pressure Stanford. And that's exactly what they go after when Candace Wiggins makes a terrific cut. Appel gets the foul on the double team. Holmes down on the deck. And she had Hornbuckle tied up. The possession arrow will give it back to Tennessee. We have 16-26 to go in an eight-point ball game for a national title. Use the phrase in the first half, staying in contact. They're still doing it. Bobbitt with a lob to Parker. Double teamed underneath. Got in too deep. Wanted the foul. Didn't get it. Turns around to the official. Wanted that call. How about just the catch in traffic? Now there she goes with a right hand. Basket and the foul. And Appel, it's her turn to beat. She thought she drew a charge. <laughs> She just gave you two examples of why she is the best player in college basketball. That catch on the prior possession. How about this? Six foot five, the crossover, the handle to go by multiple defenders, change her body in midair to avoid the charge. That's as good as it gets. Boy, that was really close, too. Appel picked up her second foul. She thought she got there. The replay showed she might have. 
But Parker was determined to make that play after she had the one stuffed underneath the basket. Yeah, terrific body control. Candace Parker is a player with tremendous pride. Wiggins asking for help. Gets it. Wiggins the only one on the floor right now for Stanford that has a chance to dribble out of trouble. And when they double team her, she's got to give it up. Appel blocked by Parker. Parker's not going to get the foul. It's going to be on Augusty, I believe. First second. Tennessee on top. The lead has grown to 11 points. It's not all fun and games when you're a mascot. Every year I find myself where the season always ends meets the bills never stop. You know that place where you realize even a squirrel can't live off peanuts? Well, maybe you don't, but believe me, I'm there. Here's a way to score on savings. Nice. Switch your car insurance to State Farm. You'll save big, plus get a payment plan that fits your budget. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You know I wear this everywhere. You gotta be a little bit twisted to do this job. You gotta live right on the edge. I wanna know immediately what's going on. Get your ass outside and earn your money. Oh yeah! Stay the hell away from me, all right? I want the crowd down and I want it now! Deadliest Catch, new season premieres Tuesday, April 15th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel. Presenting Ortho Weed Be Gone Max. So revolutionary, it targets and kills the toughest weeds without harming your lawn. Ortho Weed Be Gone sprayed here. Ordinary weed killer here. Only Ortho Weed Be Gone has a foaming action and weed targeting formula for total root kill. So it killed the weeds, but not the grass. The ordinary weed killer killed everything. Ortho Weed Be Gone Max. Kills weeds, not lawns. Guaranteed. Also available with crabgrass control. The CSPN telecast available in striking high definition on ESPN HD presented by Olivia and our aerial coverage for tonight's game. Courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship Bloomin' Onion 1. The Outback Airship is in town as part of Outback's 20th Bloomin' Birthday celebration. Well, we've had a good night here in Tampa. Not even raining indoors tonight. <laughs> what a bonus. A pal at the line. Rims out on that one. Appel, the sophomore from Pleasant Hill, California. One out of three from the line. And one out of four. She just doesn't see herself. It's unusual for her to miss free throws. She's just three of eight from the field. A couple of turnovers. Stanford has matched its biggest lead at 46-35. Parker, lazy pass, picked off by Holmes. Wiggins, nice shot, sort of airplaned it up there with the right hand to get away from the defenders. Ball, 17-footer, and got it. I like her future. This is a young woman who's got some ability. She's a Californian out of Sacramento. Yeah, she will get much more of an opportunity with Nikki and Sicky gone next year. Tons of talent, Vicky Ball. 18 turnovers now as that high pass got away. Dusty wants a screen working off of it into the lane, knocked away by Wiggins. Wiggins got it back, but it was off of her out of bounds. 
nine to shoot. You've got to start making some inroads into this deficit, Mike, yep. because this is not a team that's got explosive athletes to score it quickly. I was just going to say, Tennessee would be very content just to trade baskets. Bjorklund has to foul, or has to fire, with no time on the shot clock to rebound to Peterson. As you get underneath four minutes of your Stanford, you simply must be within about six points because there's no way you can make up a deficit as a shot and the game clock are winding down. They don't have the personnel for it. Holmes got by Bobbitt. Nice screen inside by Appel to clear the way down the right side of the lane. 48-39, down to single digits again. Bobbitt unloads the three, short. It's interesting they went under the screen. As many threes as she made, yeah. you, know, you wonder if Pat Summit just, you know, wants her to get to the deep left corner, because that is where Bobbitt is most comfortable. Appel against the double team. Foul's going to be on ball. Return with us to Augusta as ESPN celebrates one of the world's greatest events. Early round coverage of the Masters Thursday and Friday on ESPN at 4 Eastern. And don't forget to watch the Masters Par 3 contest. Coverage begins Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Masters.org, then continues on ESPN HD and ESPN360.com at 3 p.m. A few things in sports I'd rather watch than Tiger Woods at the top of his oh. game. Just the sight of Augusta takes your breath away. Appel missed three in a row. Offensive rebound that time by Harmon bailed him out. But those are three points they have left at the line that they are going to need. Remember Memphis? You can't miss free throws and win a title. They're going to get ball again. She's a foul magnet. When she comes in, she doesn't last very long. Well, that's five team fouls already on Tennessee, so their aggressiveness is, is perhaps going to get Stanford in the bonus a little bit early. What if they can get Holmes' screen to set up a three? She's a deadly shooter when she has some time. Appel, three-second call. She had good position. They took too long to get it to her. Sarah Vanderveer pleading her case with D. Cantner, but the 19 turnovers against a team that's got superior athleticism, that is tough. And they come in sixth best in the country in terms of turnovers. Look at Ball, that ball. time was right there. Wow, did she get off her feet in a hurry? Ball has half a dozen. Stanford just doesn't get many runs at Tennessee before the Lady Vols respond. Candace with a miss. Ball with a rebound and a foul against Appel, I believe. There are two places where Stanford is losing this basketball game. Points off turnovers is one, and this is the other. Offensive rebounds and second chance points. Look at the athlete go up and get that. That is tremendous size at six foot four and terrific hops. That's three on Appel, and there was no one even near her to block out. She had an uncontested look at it. 50 to 40. Tennessee maintaining control. Candace Parker back in the ball game. Augusti. Parker tried to keep it alive. Last touch by Stanford. See, even when they're not getting the offensive rebounds, Stanford is not able to corral it. Right. Harmon. Parker with a fadeaway jumper. Knocked out of bounds. That will be out to Stanford. Well, Parker has not been the scoring machine tonight. Neither has Wiggins. But the complimentary players have done the job for Tennessee, something a lot of people didn't think they could. And that is turnover number 20. You do not have a chance to win with 20 turnovers in the first... 
29 minutes of the game. about car as a kid we do introducing the first ever pontiac ga gt the most powerful car under 30 grand he said he had to go to santa fe for work big conference right you know what's happening you know he's with another car driving around probably to some rock climbing wall or out on an expensive dinner he'll say it was with a client it's probably that red Cadillac CTS from Avis. Again. With dozens of the hottest cars to choose from, there's a reason Avis is your other car. Electrocardiogram technology from GE. Small enough to fit in a backpack. Very good. Powerful enough to bring modern healthcare to places like rural India. Disciplined investing. It isn't about star fund managers. At zero price, it's about experienced investment teams that stay the course. For each three, five, and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Scott Reese in the studio. This is Sports Center right now. Bill Self, fresh off his first national title, is now a man in demand. His alma mater, Oklahoma State, is wooing the Kansas coach. Self spoke about his future today, said he's just looking for security. And the Red Sox beat the Tigers in the home opener at Fenway Park. Billy Buckner throwing out the first pitch. Manny Ramirez supplying the offense a triple turned homer, sort of, actually. A three bagger and an error. Sox win 5 0. The Tigers fall to 0 and 7 on the season. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. Mike? Scott, we have 11.58 to go in this game for a national title. Tennessee going for its eighth under Pat Summit, and they have the lead at 50-40 over the Stanford Cardinals. Bjorklund, not shy about putting it up. She can't buy one. And her shots have looked good, too. Well, through the first two-thirds of the season, she was terrific, but it's been a struggle from that point forward. So they can get up and grill and guard and just make it as difficult as possible because they don't have the athletes to go by them. And there is a completely missed shot at the baseline by Peterson. Shot clock's going to expire, and they didn't realize it. Wouldn't have helped Wiggins too much. She was about 38 feet away from the basket anyway. There is no mystery why Tennessee is winning. If you look at the combined points off turnovers and their second chance points, those two categories, 13 and 18, it's 31 to 12 is their advantage. minutes to go in this game and Tennessee has just taken its biggest lead at 52 to 40. And they have just surpassed the point total they had in the two prior games against LSU and Texas A&M. They could only muster 50. Those were brutal shooting games. They have found a balanced offense tonight. Appel. Nice soft touch. Back to a 10 point game. Horn buckle pushing into the lane, got caught up in the air with nowhere to go. On the floor again, Tennessee basketball, and it's Bobbitt. And Tennessee just out hustling everybody for the loose ball. They're so much quicker than Stanford is at every position. 
many opportunities can you give them without paying the price? Hornbuckle again got caught up in the air. Tennessee making some mental mistakes they did not make in the first half. 12 turnovers against the Lady Vols, and Anna Sigmund will be coming back in with those three fouls. If we were counting riding time in a wrestling match, Stanford would be at a major deficit. And what that means is their fatigue level is mounting because they've spent so much time on the defensive end of the floor. Wiggins got her isolated on the right side. Parker came over great help defense. And now Parker three on two. And we have a foul. Tennessee will go to the line. Now the focal point of the defense has been on Wiggins. Alberta Augusti does a terrific job. Once Wiggins gets the angle, it's Candace Parker at six foot five with tremendous length and an excellent ability to come over and block shots from the weak side. Parker very unselfish running that break, did the right thing, made the bounce pass. Peterson picked up her third personal. There's the double team. And Tennessee turns it over again. They are doing their best to keep Stanford in this contest. Lumping all their mistakes together. Appel. Had the shot. Maybe just the presence of Anasicki was enough. Ahead to Parker. Foul on the way up. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, you talk about the mistakes Tennessee is making. In that last huddle, usually the coaches step aside, talk to each other first before they address the team. Not so with Pat Summit. She was so mad. She fanned over and lit into her team. She was shaking mad like your mom gets when she's really going to light into you. <laughs> she screamed at them. You have got to be more disciplined in your shot selection and your defense. Do you want to win this game? And she stepped aside and collected herself. The people in the back row behind me, they were like, whoa. <laughs> it was intense. I try to leave the house when mom got like that. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, no question. It was a December 22nd loss to Stanford where she changed her mindset with this team. She thought they were too complacent. They came back from the Christmas holiday, which she said she had a miserable one. And she basically said, it's my way or the highway. Did not speak to them in that first practice after Christmas. Everybody in the building was stunned. That's how angry Pat Summit was. She's a tremendous coach and a tremendous motivator. Bold on Wooday. And Appel in there working hard, got a rebound and drew a foul. Stanford is going to have to make a stand here very, very soon. I agree with your point. If they go under six minutes and they're still down 10, 12 points, they don't have a way to get back. No chance. The makeup of her team is not conducive to being explosive on the offensive end in a quick amount of time. Appel is now missed four in a row at the line. She has not looked herself all night long. She's rushed at times with her back-to-the-basket moves. 73.4% from the line is a free throw shooter. Yikes. Five in a row. Those are huge points. Now Mike, she was not feeling well this morning. A tar of end of their kind of brushed it off. But you wonder if that's having an impact on it. Well, you would want to surmise that somebody who is that good a free throw shooter and that good a competitor is not going to miss five in a row for no reason. Poland was open, can't hit it. They have gone stone cold dry. Parker triple team. Augusti, offensive foul. Well, right now, it looks like neither team is willing to take advantage of the other, and they're getting their opportunities. And that's going to be four on Augusti. Holmes will come back in. For Stanford, outstanding three-point shooter. Um, Woody has that one kicked out of bounds. And Tennessee is eight minutes and seven seconds away from becoming just the fourth team to be able to go back-to-back -back championships. USC did it in 83 and 84. Tennessee is a program that did it. They repeated, remember, in the mid-90s, mid to late 90s, and then Connecticut did it. Appel with the left hand. And she's probably very happy that went in and there was no foul call. Yes. I don't think she wants to go back to the line right now. 
They cut it down to single digits again at nine. Stanford's going to have to make just about everything, I think, from here on in. Including a couple of threes, which Tara Vanderbilt would tell you has been her advantage since they instituted that shot. Hornbuckle again made a mistake, got caught up in the air, had nowhere to go, and a sickie with the miss. And there is a travel on gold on Wooday. She did not see the pressure coming. She turned around and stutter stepped. Tennessee with a lot of ups and downs, but they have the lead at nine. for car has never been more real. Introducing the first ever Pontiac GA GT, the most powerful car under 30 grand. The world's top riders are following the dirt to the Navy Moto X World Championships. Start Saturday, live on ESPN. Tonight on Sports Center, full post-game analysis and interviews live from Tampa, and the latest concerning injuries to Derek Jeter and LeBron James. Plus, Tiger talking Grand Slam at the Masters. Each Sports Center after the game. If you heat your home with natural gas, you know it's warm and comforting. You know how consistently it heats your water. You know the control you have when you're cooking, and how you can always count on natural gas. Tennessee homes using high-efficiency natural gas appliances instead of electric emit an average of 30% less greenhouse gases, making your use of natural gas healthier for our planet. Let's put some real miles on those bikes. Road trip? Yeah. Oh! Get into some laughs with hit movies on stars. The ultimate destination for movie entertainment. That was spectacular! Stars, the biggest hits plus original programming. Get into it. Add stars for only $10 more per month when you subscribe to Charter Digital Cable. The Pontiac game-changing performance of the Final Four has to be Tennessee's miracle comeback against LSU that ended with Alexis Hornbuckle's putback. For Tennessee's efforts, Pontiac will donate $5,000 to the Lady Vols General Scholarship Fund. That was a heck of a finish, wasn't it, Trey? Tennessee has hit only two of its last 12 shots, but Stanford has not been able to take advantage of the dry spell. They've been just as cold themselves. And it's Tennessee basketball with 7.24 and counting. Dangerous pass, nearly a steal, ball in the left hand. The air apparent to Nikki and a sick and oh boy. Uh -oh. Vicky Ball went down, immediately grabbed that left knee. At Summit and the training staff, the assistant coaches, right there. Well, she's played so well off the bench, eight points, and you're right, she is the heir apparent. She has tremendous talent. She's an emotional player, and at times of this season, it has gotten the best of her. They manage her really well from that staff, but this is a dribble drive, and she plants on that left leg, and I can't look at that. You, you heard Pat someone you need to relax, calm down. You can see the emotion, but she never lets go of it right there. She is in pain, likely done for the game, but she turns yep. to her teammate. Is that a terrific moment? She's telling him, do it for me. 
And they will take her directly to the locker room. Here she goes down the lane and comes down and appeared to jam that left leg. And in obviously a great deal of pain as she had before. We can only hope uh, it's not nearly as bad as it looks. She has made two or three plays now. You see the teammate Nikki Anasicki upset for the freshman. It's a very emotional situation, but something that uh, this is easier said than done, but you have to eliminate as much of the emotion as you possibly can. The uh, feeling of dejection you might have for the teammate because you have work to do here. This is their 1-2-1-1 one, one, one. you trap. Peterson with a lazy pass nearly picked off. Tennessee has just been all over Stanford tonight. And every 15 seconds they take off the clock, gets them that much closer to another national title. Wiggins for three. Air ball. Gold on Woody trying to save it, but could do no more than grab it and throw it out of bounds. Now, you, that was shocking to see Wiggins that wide open and miss everything. The all-time three-point field goal maker in Stanford history. All-time leading scorer in the history of the Pac-10, a four-time All-American. She would become just the third of a select group of four-time All-Americans to not win a national championship. And not getting here has bedeviled her throughout her career. In this tournament, she had two 40-point games in order to get here. Ball is tipped out to goal on Wooday. 55-44. We're going under that magical six-minute mark you talked about. Goal on Wooday. Terrible pass. Picked off by Parker. Just very lazy ball handling by Stanford. And boy, it's costly. I think that's fatigue. When you see those kinds of plays, that's players who are worn out. And when you face the kind of pressure they have for the first 34 minutes, you will be tired. 23 turnover. Parker, foul. We've talked a little bit about Nikki Anasicki's achievements in the classroom. This is a young woman who has been committed to her teammates from day one. She was asked what her motivation is. Her mom raised eight children by herself. There isn't a day that goes by that Nikki Anasicki isn't thankful for her mother's efforts. Parker at the line as Peterson has picked up her fourth foul. That's back to an 11-point lead. Nikki has said, there are times where you think you're tired. She said, but I have no right to be tired. Huh. No, my mother worked two jobs to support all of yeah. us children. Timeout, 546 left. The lead is 12. about car as a kid we do introducing the first ever pontiac g8 gt the most powerful car under 30 grand hi enterprise i'm at the repair shop and i need to rent a car at enterprise we'll arrange to pick you up free and get you on your way nice day mom pick enterprise we'll pick you up you gotta be a little bit twisted to do this job you gotta live right on the edge. I wanna know immediately what's going on. Get your ass outside and earn your money. Oh, oh yeah! Stay the hell away from me, all right? I want the crowd count and I want it now! Deadliest Catch, new season premieres Tuesday, April 15th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel.
magic begins when you realize you can afford a Disney vacation. Other affordable packages all year long. Visit DisneyWorld.com slash affordable. The punks just took it in broad daylight, and it took me a while to realize what was going on. I just kept looking for it. Luckily, Jeffrey had LoJack, the most successful theft recovery system on Earth, and the only one with a 90% recovery rate. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented on ESPN by Orbitz, is brought to you by the all-new Pontiac Vibe, the official performance machines of the NCAA. The lead 12 for Tennessee, Parker and Wiggins, both 14 points, so that's a draw. The defense for Tennessee has been outstanding. It's been a team defensive effort against Candace Wiggins. Everyone on the floor must be aware. And when you go back door, it's the help that's got to be there. And watch Shannon Bobbitt step up and take a charge. This is one of five uncharacteristic turnovers for Candace Wiggins. Yes, she's got 14 points, three boards. She's earned every single one of them. The quickness of Tennessee has been the difference in this game. Forcing turnovers, getting rebounds, whatever the stat, quickness has been the key to it. Appel and Wiggins have been the offense. Holmes. Those are shots that have to fall for them. Peterson. Appel trying to screen a defender off, and Wiggins with a bad pass tossed it away. Smart play there by Hornbuckle. She could have had something one on one, decided to bring it out because the clock is in favor of Tennessee. thing you can't do if you're Stanford again because of your personnel, Mike, is get up and full court pressure. You don't have great speed to trap. You don't have incredible one-on-one -on -one lockdown defenders. So now another offensive rebound. You use another full 30, and I go back to the point I made. How much time has Tara Vanderbilt's team spent on the defensive end of the floor? Yeah, they've got to be wilted. Hornbuckle was the one who kept that last one alive. Down to 10 on the shot clock, the shot clock, so Bobbitt will go into action. Parker with three to shoot. 15-footer off balance, drained it. Perfect execution. There was one tick on the shot clock. She knows she's closing in. She referenced in the papers earlier this, this week, you know, one national championship, people can maybe question, say you got lucky. Two, no luck involved. Well, that shot was a stake in the heart down with one second to go on the shot clock and being able to drain that one. 58-44. Tennessee taking its time. And the Lady Ball fans can sense it's right there in front of them. Loose ball, and Asiki comes up with it just the way Tennessee has all night long. Shot clock will expire on this one as Baba thought she drew a foul, but no whistle. Candace Parker is three minutes and 29 seconds from getting back-to-back -back championships and cementing her legacy as one of the best players in the history of women's college basketball. With one tick of the clock, she drains it. Hey, Dad, I want a go phone. Let me sleep on it. It has a limited talk and text. Let me sleep on it. And no surprise bill. I can't think it any longer. So I'm free. You ask about the go phone every night and day. As long as there are no surprise bills to pay. We're gonna go and get you a go phone today. I love you to the end of time. I swear, I love you to the end of time. Get unlimited talk to all wireless AT&T customers and add unlimited text. Go phone only from AT&T. What happened to the conference room? Conference room? This isn't the conference room. What is it? This is our new innovation station. From now on, this is where we meet to innovate. To rethink the core processes of our organization. We're doing all that? Well, we haven't actually done it yet. But when we do do it, we have a place to do it. In.
favorite team home with Glidden Team Colors Paint, the true colors of true fans. Team Colors Paint, exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. NCAA tournament and postseason. That's all you have to say to me. Anything less than a national championship is a failure. The reason why all of us came here was to win a national championship. I guess that's why we have seven. Tonight would make it eight, and they are only three minutes and 29 seconds away. Stanford has committed 24 turnovers tonight, their most since December of 2005. And it's been because of the Tennessee defensive pressure. Now they're not really looking for turnovers. What they're looking for is just for some clock to come off. The hell helping out on the press. See, that was a softer kind of pressure than we saw early in the game. Pat somebody's just trying to get this clock yep. to run. She doesn't want him committing fouls, no taking chances. Let's just get to the triple zeros. Didn't get here by accident, did she? No. It's extraordinary to think that this is a woman who will now have eight national championships. She is getting closer and closer to a thousand wins. This would make 983. How many has she lost? 182. You know, Mike, if you took her road winning percentage, and this is a woman who plays the toughest schedule in the country year in and year out, if you took her road winning percentage, She'd be in the top 10 among active coaches with a road winning percentage. <laughs> Remarkable. There's her record. Inducted into a Hall of Fame, 13 SEC titles, seven NCAA championships, 18 Final Fours, and she had four other Final Fours as, as an NAIA or an, and I'm AIAW. I had an N in there. Which was the women's championship before there was an NCAA men's championship. You're exactly right. 19 State Farm All Americas, 66 All SEC players, 12 Olympians. Appel with a runner. Nice shot. So now, on top of that, you can't help but like her. Two minutes and 12 seconds left to go in this game. There's a foul as. Stanford's only alternative try to lengthen this game. It's going to be a tough way to go out for the Wade Trophy winner, Candace Wiggins, who had waited her entire career to get to the Final Four in spite of great play. She gets to the championship game, but it looks like her team is going to come up short tonight. They're down by a dozen. Well, Tara Vanderbilt said, I wanted to enjoy every single moment. I had an opportunity to coach this special young lady. Candace Wiggins will leave as the all-time leading scorer in the history of the Pac-10, surpassing none other than basketball legend Lisa Leslie. She's done it with an extraordinary spirit about her. She's made her teammates feel her success. Candace Wiggins has been an extraordinary college athlete. You know, it's just the way the game goes, but a lot of times superstars are not the most well-liked or the most popular players. But she is. Everybody seems to like Candace Wiggins. And I think it's because of the smile she always seems to have on her face. Even when things aren't going well for her. If they're going well for the team, she's happy for them. And just seems to raise the level of spirit and play of everybody around her. Rosalind Golden Woody, her teammate, said, I'm not as physically talented as Candace Wiggins. But she has made me feel every bit of her success. And I feel like I'm a better basketball player just stepping between the lines with her. What an extraordinary compliment to a teammate. Appel hits a couple of free throws. She has 16 points. And she was one of the players that had to step up tonight and has offensively. But Tennessee has shown too much balance. And now, Parker, this is almost unfair. Somebody of her size with this kind of speed and this kind of ball handling ability. 
Globe Trotters have a women's division. Yeah, six foot five with guard handle, guard skills. Vicky Ball, we are told, who had to be helped off the court, has a knee sprain. They have evaluated her in the Tennessee locker room. This Saturday, tune in at 7 Eastern for the NCAA Hockey Championship, presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. For live stats and game recaps from the Frozen Four, go to NCAA.com, the home for all 88 NCAA championships. That's great news for Vicki Baugh that they apparently uh, have determined it's no worse than a sprain. Tomorrow morning will be the number one pick in the draft. And most people feel that Wiggins will be the number three pick in the draft. And there is Ball coming back. She doesn't want to miss the end of this one. Great to hear it's just a sprain, Mike. In fact, someone I asked her, you know, how is eight different? You, you, you just keep racking up titles. I said, how is eight different for you? And look at her. There's the emotional big ball. She said, you know what, Doris? It's hard to win national championships in college basketball. It's really hard. But to go back to back is something incredibly special. And it gets harder every year because there are more good teams capable of winning. Just not Stanford's night, and Parker with a rebound draws a foul. 116 left in the game. The lead has grown to 14 points. How gratifying for the coaching staff to have so many big contributors from Tennessee. Bob, it was huge. Anna Sicky was extraordinary, and they were building their lead. Now look at this lineup that Tennessee has. Bobbitt is a senior. Hornbuckle is a senior. Anna Sicky is a senior. Parker has one year left, but she's already announced she's leaving. That's four your top five that are gone. What you have is Augusti, who's now moved into the starting lineup, is another senior. So if you count it that way, the top five players on this team will graduate. You think Tennessee will have some freshmen coming in next year? They, they've got a terrific class. They reload. There's no rebuild. And this is going to be an offensive foul on Jane Appel. And Jane Appel will have fouled out of the ball game. They will not be saying goodbye to her. She's just a sophomore. And has a tremendous future in the next two years. The numbers on Jane Appel for this season, 15 points a game and nine rebounds. She was better than that in the tournament. She is going to be an All-American center. And there is Wiggins, who gets a standing ovation as she goes out. She and she been, deserved it. Yes, yeah, she does, Mike. She's been the most dynamic personality in the tournament, has Candace Wiggins. What an extraordinary career. She should hold her head up high. I know her heart's broken, but what a terrific effort. Sissy Pierce, number 13, is in for Stanford. And Holmes reaches in and commits a foul. The Sydney Smallbone, a freshman, number 20 from Granger, Indiana, gets a chance to get her name in the book. Let's take a look at today's coach.